I hope you're all well. So today we've got another Sure Cuts A Lot tutorial and this is a full tutorial. It's not just Sure Cuts A Lot. I'm going to show you how we actually make our rhinestone stencil and put our rhinestones on as well. So we're using Hotfix rhinestones and we're going to create rhinestone stencils. These are great and we're going to do three different ways of doing it. So we're going to use text, then we're going to use a basic shape from the library and then we're going to bring an SVG in and do that as well. I have done other tutorials on Scal and I'll link all of those in the description below along with Scal itself which is currently reduced and with that reduction you get a bundle. It's not an affiliate link, I don't earn anything from it. I just love this program, I have absolutely fallen in love with it. For me it's so simple and easy to use. Just my opinion, but I've used a lot of different third party programs and this is by far the easiest. So first thing we're gonna do is text. So I've created my text using the type tool and I've chosen the font Georgia. And you'll see at the moment, they're quite close together. And you do want to think about the tracking on these. So the space between the letters, because when you add your rhinestones in a second, you'll see they do kind of bundle up together. So you want your letters to be quite well spaced. The other thing is that whatever size you create your template in Shakuts a lot is the size that you need to cut it. That's super important because you're creating a template to this size here. And if we then export it and bring it into Design Space and we make it smaller, for example, then our stencil holes are going to be smaller. Not the end of the world if they're a little bit big, but again, you don't want them super big either. So we can change the text size. However, when we actually come to Design Space, the text size is not the same in Shakuts a lot as it is in Design Space. So what we actually need to go by is the width and the height. So to find that, you're gonna click on this diamond here with the four arrows, and you can then see the width. So I actually want to make mine a width of, let's say, nine inches. And I've kept the tick there so it's in proportion. If we come up to effects, and rhinestones, it will then bring up my rhinestone box. So the first thing you'll see is we've got all of these stone sizes. So most hot fix rhinestones will have a size. So that could be SS10, which is the most common, all the way up to SS75. 10 does seem to be the most common one. Now mine are SS10, the second one, so mine are between 2.8 and 2.9 millimeters. However, that's not the setting I choose. I normally go for an SS11 or an SS12. The first thing is not all your rhinestones will be uniform. So the sizes do vary uh, in terms of millimeters. And if you've got one that's right on that threshold of 2.90, you're gonna struggle to get that to sit in the stencil. So it's better to have them a little bit larger so that your rhinestones can fit in that stencil better than going too small. So I always go up one step. So either SS11 or SS12. It's worth doing a quick little heart or just a quick little shape and cutting out in just vinyl, just normal vinyl and then seeing that your rhinestones will fit it, just so you know what stone size you're working with. But always go up one or two. You'll also see we've got the rhinestone shape, so mine are circular, and I can then select preview. The stone size we'll need to keep the same, but the stone spacing we can change. So we can either go down, which means we'll increase the amount of stones that are there, and if we set preview again, we can see the difference that that makes. Or we can go up, which will increase the spacing so it decreases the amount of stones. And again, if we select preview, we can see how that will look. We can adjust the spacing to fit path. So I normally keep it 
on this setting here, which is decrease slash increase, but you can do just decrease or just increase. And then you can play with those settings as well. And every time you change something, you will need to select preview to see how it ends up looking. The other thing I can do is fill the shape with stones. So if I select that and then preview, that will completely change the way that it looks as well. So if I reduce the stone spacing down, that's then going to make a difference. Now what I will say about this is that the font you're using and the words that you're typing will make a difference to how this look. It doesn't always go the way you want it to go. So you are gonna have to build up a good library of fonts that you know work really well with this process because not all of them do and not all of them will look the way they've looked previously depending on the word that you've typed as well. So when it comes to turning text to rhinestones, it can be very hit and miss and it can be quite frustrating. So I'm pretty happy with the way that that one looks. However, I've got some stones missing there, but if I go down much more, I'm gonna end up affecting other areas that I don't want to affect. So I'm gonna leave it like that and press okay. I've then got a couple of options. The first one is that I bring this into design space and I then cut it as it is. And on my template, I manually place the stones where I want them to go. The other option is if I zoom in using my zoom tool, which is here, I can see where perhaps I would want to create a line of rhinestones. So if I come up to object and ungroup, what I want is those individual stones. So I'm actually just going to come up and I only need it on the Y. So I'm going to come up to object and then I'm going to select break apart. So that's changed the way that that looks, but it's still the same. So those circle sizes are still the same, even though they don't look like rhinestones anymore. So what I actually want to do is select an individual circle, come up to object and duplicate. And in total columns, I'm going to add the amount of stones that I want. So we're just going to go with five to start with and OK. I'm then going to move those stones roughly to where I want them. And then I'm going to select them and I'm going to use my nudge tool, which is on this arrow here, this diamond arrow, to manually place them. Once I'm happy with that, I can then highlight around all of them. I can come up to path and union. And that will then basically weld them together. So if I look at the width, it's 8.955 inches. So that's the width I need it to be in design space. So it's super important that the proportion you're making it in Shakutsalot is the correct size for your item that you're going to put your hot fix rhinestones onto. And, uh, and of course, these go on to a variety of different materials. So I'm going to come up to file and export. It wants to save it as an SVG, so I'm just gonna put happy scal rhinestone and save. I'm gonna make sure it's design space compatible and okay. We can then come into design space and select upload, upload image, find our SVG and open, give it a name and a tag and save. Select it and insert to canvas. And we can see it's come in at a width of 8.955. So if we just check that with scale. Yep, and then a height of 2.608. Perfect. So I don't need to change that. I can then go to make it and start cutting that. And of course, I had unioned it, so it came in unioned. If we don't union it, it will come in 
group so we will then need to attach it and I'll show you that with the next one so if we go back to scale this time I'm just going to do a basic shape from the library so I'm going to go to my library and let's just select a heart and click that and I'm going to make that I'm going to bring this down I'm going to make that a width of let's say four inches I'm then going to come up to effects and rhinestones Again, I can choose my rhinestone size, and I, like I say, always go one or two bigger. So I'm going to do SS11 with a circle and preview. And I could leave it like that, or I could fill the shape with stones. And then, of course, I could play with the stone spacing. And don't forget, it will always give you the stone count. So I'm actually going to just leave that as it is, because I'm pretty happy with the way that that looks. We've got a stone missing either side there. I could come in and manually place them like I did before by using break apart, or I could just manually place them on my stencil because it's my transfer tape is still gonna pick them up. It's at a width of 4.001. So I'm gonna go to file, export, give it a name, so let's call it Heart Scal Rhine, and save, and of course our export options will come up and we want to make sure it's design space compatible. We can come into design space, upload, upload image, browse, find our SVG and open, give it a name and a tag and save, then insert our image. So if we look, it's it's a slightly different width. So if we go back into Shakut's a lot, it needs to be 4.001 inches. So let's just change that. And the height should then be 3.414. And it needs to be 3.430. So all we're going to do is unlock that and just make that three zero and that will then be how we want it to be we can then unlock it we can see from our layers panel that that's come in actually attached together because we did it all in one go so we can then simply go to make it but just check your layers panel if you can see you've got separate layers then you will need to attach them we can then go to make it and we can cut that out. So we're back in scale and this time we're going to do an SVG. So I'm going to go to import and I'm going to find an SVG. So I'm going to do this really cute llama from Creative Fabrica. And again, I need to make sure that the size I'm making it in cuts a lot is the size that I'm going to cut it. So let's make that a height of five and a half inches. And of course we can zoom in on that. Now, if we look at our layers panel, you can see here our SVG. And if we click on this arrow downward, we can see each of those layers. So the first layer I'm going to work on is the outside of the body. And actually, if I wanted to go even further, if I click that, I can work on each of those elements individually as well. But I don't need to for this, so I'm just going to do the body as one element. I can come up to Effects and Rhinestone. Choose my size, and of course with this, because I've got different layers I could do my layers in different size stones so if I wanted to do a smaller stone for the sunglasses for example I could because the layer will allow me to do that but I'm going to make this SS11 a round stone and preview and I'm just going to reduce that stone spacing slightly happy with that so I'm going to select OK. Now if I wanted to, if I wanted to do this in all different colours, I could select just one 
of those different layers there, come up to my colour palette and change the colour on it. So I could do that as a layer all on its own just by using the layers panel here. So next I'm going to do the mouth area and I'm first of all going to change the colour on that. So let's just do, let's go light with a grey for that. And we can come up to effects, rhinestones. Again, we can choose our size, and if we wanted to, because these are individual layers, we can actually change the stone size. So if I wanted to use a larger or a smaller stone, I could. But I'm going to keep it at SS11, and circular, and preview. And I'm actually going to do fill shape with stones on this one. And then I can play with how that area looks. And I'm happy with that, so I can select OK. Next, we're going to select the outline of the glasses. And I'm just doing this using the layers panel. But let's change the colour. I'm going to change the colour on the outline to a blue and OK. And then I can come up to effects and rhinestones. Again, I can choose my rhinestone size and my shape and preview. And I want to make that a little bit smaller. And you can also see I've got a bit of an overlap there on the glasses. So what I can do is cancel that. And I can hold my shift key down. And just make those glasses a little bit smaller. And we can sort the inside of them out in a second. But I'm going to work the spacing of the glasses first. So I'm just going to use my nudge over here which can be found in that diamond box. And I'm just going to place them so they're not overlapping any other stones. Once I'm happy with that I can then go to effects and rhinestones. I can choose my size and my shape and preview and I can then play with how that looks. So I'm just going to play with the spacing as well to fit path. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I've got a couple that overlap but I'm not overly worried about that. So I can then select OK. And of course, if I wanted to, I could spend more time moving these. If we then look at the glasses and I bring those over, we now need to change the size of those. So if I hold down my shift key, I'll keep the proportion. And I'm just going to concentrate on this one first of all. And I'm going to use my nudge again to get that where I want it to be. And then I'm going to make sure that only that layer is selected and I'm going to come up to object and break apart and that will then separate those two inner pieces so that I can place this one where I want it to go. So if I then change the colour on this to red, OK, and I can then come up to effects, rhinestones, I can choose my rhinestone size and the shape and preview and I can also fill the shape with stones and actually I'm really happy with the way that looks straight away and it's only 22 stones so I'm quite happy with that so I can then select OK and then I can do the exact same with the other side so I'm going to change the colour to red and then come into effects, rhinestones, choose the side and the shape and preview and then fill shape with stones and preview 
and then okay. So I'm really happy with the way this has ended up. So all I'm gonna do is come up to file and export. Let's give it a name. It's saving as an SVG, so save. And design space compatible is selected, so okay. We can then come into design space, go to upload, upload image, browse, find our find our file and open. Give it a name and a tag and save. Select it and insert to canvas. The first thing we want to do is actually check the size. And this is currently all grouped together. So we're going to check the size. So the height is 5.577. So if we go to check cuts a lot and we check the height, it should be 5.5. .5. So we're going to go back into design space and change that height to 5.5. .5. And the width should be 4.01 or the width is 4.01. So if we go back into scale, we can see that it needs to be 3.950. So we can then unlock that and type in 3.950 and enter and then lock that back up. Now we've got two options with this. We can at this point ungroup it and if we select just our body, we can attach that together. And I then just want to attach the two glasses together now, I could cut these all as separate layers. So I could go to make it and cut them as separate stencils and then transfer them separately as layers like I would with iron-on. Or if I come back in, I can simply attach them all together so they cut as one complete stencil and then I can manually come in and place my colour rhinestones where I want them to go. It totally depends on the image that you're working with as to how you do that. If it's easy to do it as one layer and you can easily place your stones so you're not dealing with like a thousand stones, then just do it as one stencil. If you're going to be doing lots of different colours and they're all intertwined and you want certain colours, certain areas, you're better off doing it as separate layers. We can then go to make it. Now, as I say, I have tried so many different materials for this and you really do need like a flock adhesive. They are so sticky though, like really sticky. So I cut mine on foil craft board holographic. I know it sounds really quite, oh my gosh, really? But these are so sticky that you need a good strong setting to actually cut through the glue. We can then go and start cutting our stencil. So I've got a green mat here and I've got this adhesive flock. As I say, this has taken me so many um, tries and purchases to find the right one. I think this is the, well, I know this is the best one that I found. Whether it's the best one out there or not, I don't know. I honestly don't know. But so far, out of all the ones that I've tried, and trust me, I've tried a fair few, this is the best. So I will link to it in the description below. Not the cheapest, not going to lie, um, but it does work. Load as we normally would. And then press our C so it can start cutting. So you want to keep a real eye on the blade and you want to keep checking that blade and if you see that it's 
got something on the end of it, all you need to do is press your paws. Make sure you don't move this part of the machine. You literally want to open the clamp. Take your blade out and you can see there we have actually got some circles on the end of it. Remove them. Get in a ball of tin foil and just gently pushing the blade into it. It won't sharpen it, that's a myth. Uh, these blades are carbide steel. Tin foil is not going to sharpen it, but what it will do is get any fibers that are left from the flock and the adhesive off your blade. We can then put that back in, close it up, and then press that pause button again. And it will resume cutting for us. So as we can see, that's now all cut out. So I'm going to remove it from the mat. And I find using your scraper really works. Just nice and gently. You don't need to be, you know, hard with it. But just very gently come in and scrape as much away as you can. You can also use your hands and your fingers as well. You'll always find you've got some left. Just come in with your poker and just poke them out because this is a really sticky adhesive. So just give it a little bit of a helping hand. And you definitely want to make sure that your surface is protected because as I say, these are sticky and they do leave a residue as well. So make sure that you're working on a protected surface. You do not want to put this on, you know, your beautiful uh, wooden varnished uh, dining room table, for example. Once that's done, we've got an option. We can peel back the adhesive and put it onto a surface. Again, it will leave a residue. Um, and it will come off if you use your scraper, but if you're going to take it off the adhesive, make sure you've got a really good uh, protective uh, something on your surface. So this is really sticky and as I say, it will leave an uh, adhesive on your surface and remove the backing. And then I place that on the cardstock and I, it means I can use it again if I want to. So I've got my rhinestones here, my hot fix rhinestones. What's important about these is that they are flat backed. That's super, super important. So let's go, let's just do some, some silver ones. You'll need two items for these. The first is a paintbrush sponge. And the second is a rhinestone picker. I love this one. I use this one for a lot of rhinestones and it's great. So come in and just smooth them out. And your stencil will actually catch a lot of them. And then you can come in with your rhinestone picker and just place the rest. We're going to choose some pink ones for the ears. And I'm just going to use my picker just to manually place them. And I've got some rhinestone transfer tape. So, so this is specifically to go with hot stone rhinestones and I will link it in the description below. And all we're going to do is peel it from its backing and come in and place it on top of our rhinestones. And you do want to really sort of push down so that you make sure it's getting all of your stones. 
we can then come in and gently just start peeling back and if you've got any that don't stick just put it down a little bit and use your finger to press them And there we go, that is now on the transfer tape. So we need an easy press mat. So I've got a felt bag here and I'm gonna place my transfer on top of it. And I also need a Teflon sheet. It's really important that you use a heat protector like a Teflon sheet. I'm setting my easy press at 320 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 seconds. Depending on the fabric that you're using will depend on the time. That heat is about right for the hot fix uh, rhinestones. Come in for 20 seconds, leave it to cool. If you can peel back and you've got stones coming up onto the uh, transfer tape, then go in for another 10 seconds. Equally, if you remove and you can move your rhinestones around your fabric, again, come in for another 10 seconds. So I'm just going to come in and I just want a nice sort of firm pressure. I don't need to put loads of pressure on it, uh, but just a medium pressure is absolutely fine. I'm just leaning on it more than anything. I'm not actually putting loads of weight on it, I'm just leaning onto it. You then want to let that cool down. And it does cool quite quickly, to be fair. We can then come in and slowly peel back. You can see our stones are on there. And just come in, and you should see that they've sort of sunken in to your fabric, but just give them a little jolt and as long as they're not moving anywhere then they are absolutely fine as they are. I wouldn't put these on things that are going in the wash. Uh, even ones you buy from shops they end up coming off. The glue just isn't strong enough. I would do this for bags and uh, makeup bags and sort of things that you would have that you wouldn't necessarily wash. So even hats, shoes, you could do these on shoes. Um, but be aware, if you do them on a t-shirt, for example, they might last a couple of washes, but they're not going to last forever. As always, I hope this has been super helpful. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, if you've got any comments, please leave them below. Please make sure you subscribe, hit that like button and the notification bell, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye!